Welcome to another Eric Waite Whiskey Study, and I am really enjoying Texas Month 2019. Um, I visited five distilleries in Texas, brought back a number of different bottles, but I've also got a couple bottles that I picked up here in California that are widely available, and one is the Balcones Baby Blue. Now, I actually bought this a couple years ago. Um, I had visited a local shop, was looking at some whiskeys, and someone who worked there said, hey, this has been getting a lot of rave reviews, you might want to check it out. So I bought it, put it on a shelf, and it's sort of like, one of these days, I'm going to get into that whiskey. You know, it's just been sort of sitting there for a while, maybe collecting a little bit of dust. So now that I'm doing Texas Month and I visited the distillery, uh, Balcones, I thought this is the perfect time uh, to get into this. So before I get into this, let me show you a few photos and video uh, that I did while visiting Balcones. So one of the challenges about this whiskey is uh, that it's made from blue corn. Because how many of us go around eating blue corn? Have you ever eaten blue corn? If you've ever had blue corn, I wanna hear about it, let me know down below. The only time I've ever had blue corn is actually in the form of blue corn uh, tortilla chips that I got from Trader Joe's. Apparently they're also available at Walmart. So when you're analyzing uh, a whiskey, corn whiskey, or a bourbon, and uh, you've never had this type of corn, it's hard to see the correlation between what you're drinking and what the original uh, ingredient is. So um, if you haven't had blue corn, I highly recommend see if you can get some blue corn chips or maybe even some blue corn. You might be able to find some at Whole Foods or more of these sort of non-mainstream grocery stores there. Um, before getting into this whiskey now, I wanna give you my notes on this corn whiskey. Balcona's Baby Blue Corn Whiskey was the first Texas whiskey on the market since Prohibition. Baby Blue is crafted from roasted heirloom blue corn. It was distilled and bottled out of Balcona's Distilling in Waco, Texas. This corn whiskey is double distilled in copper pot stills and aged for at least six months in used five gallon barrels. It is not chill filtered and no coloring has been added. This bottle is batch number BB17-1. It was bottled March 7, 2017 and it retails for anywhere between 40 and $45. Alrighty, so let's get into it. So one of the challenges is if you get a lot of blue corn on the nose and those who are listening or watching have never had blue corn, then to say, yeah, I can definitely tell I'm getting blue corn, then it doesn't mean anything, right? I mean, I'm sure almost all of us have had corn of some, uh, of some kind uh, at some time, but probably very few of us have had blue corn. So if I say, yeah, I'm getting this distinctive blue corn notes, then you don't know what I'm referring to. Blue corn smells like blue corn. It <laughs> doesn't do much good. But there are some other notes there that I, I, I'm getting on this that I really, really like, and I kind of wanted to check myself to compare my notes with others. So one of the things I do uh, when I'm getting into a whiskey, one of the things I like to do is get below the shoulder, if you get close to the center of the bottle, don't judge a whiskey by a neck pour. Uh, but also, um, after I've had it a number of different ways, I have it neat, have a little bit of water, have it in a chilled glass, have it on ice, just because different people try whiskeys in different ways. Now, try in different ways, see how it plays out with various uh, different styles or ways of serving a whiskey, um, and then, I like to compare my notes with others. Now, I don't want to watch other videos that review this before I get into it, because otherwise, whatever they said, I'll start thinking that I'm getting that just because I heard them say that. So I don't want to do that. But after I go through a number of different times, I'll then go on about maybe say about 
five, six different fellow whiskey tubers, watch their videos, and then compare notes and see if they get what I got. And one of the most interesting notes that I got on this, I was kind of like doubting myself. I was like, really? I, is that what you're getting? What I get on this, on those, is like a white icing, a frosting, a, a sugary glaze that you might put on a, a corn muffin or some sort of uh, corn pastry or corn danish. So there's this sort of nice doughy pastry character to it, but also this sort of sugary glaze character to it. And when I watched Ralphie, he agreed. So um, I can't be too far off if I'm uh, agreeing with the, uh, the Jedi Master of whiskey tubers. So I get a lot of vanilla. Um, I get that white icing. Lemon. It's almost like a lemon curd. Um, a little bit of new oak. I get a little bit of lime, but it's more like a lime pop. But I get a lot of the blue corn notes, blue corn tortilla chips. There's some other spices there that I can't quite identify. I don't know what to pin it down on. There's also some floral notes that I can't quite identify. I'm not an expert on roses and flowers, and yet there's still some sort of floral note there. There's also kind of a slight green tea note but it's like a real sweet green tea. All right, on the palate. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. This is tasting really different than the other times I've had it. It's one of the magical things about whiskey that I really love. It's how it develops uh, in, 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 as it opens up, as it gets more oxygen, it is now richer than what I'd had before. It's actually been several days since I've had this. So um, if you probably notice my surroundings look a little, a little bit different. If you've seen my previous videos, I just moved. So it's actually been several days since I've had any whiskeys, but this was the last one I had, and it was probably about four or five, uh, mm, four, four days ago. And it's really coming across with it's richer i'm getting a little bit of um fruit roll but it's like a stone fruit fruit roll maybe peach maybe apricot i'm still getting that pastry sugary glaze character to it still getting a little bit of that lemon custard kind of character to it and on the back end what i'm getting is that blue corn note, which I really, really like. Um, it doesn't change a whole lot from beginning, mid, and finish, other than you get a lot more of that blue corn note kick on the, on the back end. It's a medium sweetness, but the sweetness does stay from beginning to finish, and every time I've had it, that has remained consistent. It is a medium bodied, it has a nice silky texture to it, and it finishes with a little bit of the corn note, some va vanilla and sweetness number. So this isn't so sweet that it's sort of getting into um, dessert character to it. But one of the things that really surprised me is because it's a corn whiskey and I haven't had a lot of corn whiskeys, I was sort of expecting when I came into it that it would be more like a bourbon. And I'm not getting any bourbon notes. I'm not getting like apple pie. I'm not getting the heavy cinnamon, caramel, butterscotch. Um, even the vanilla is lighter in character. Uh, I'm not getting the you know super punch of oak, uh, and I'm not getting those cherry notes that I often get on, on bourbons. One of the challenging things about this whiskey is, in terms of trying to give it a rating or a score, is because it's unique. When you're when I'm scoring scoring wines, whether Cabernet Sauvignons, Merlots, Pinot Noirs, or are scoring whiskeys, it's in the context of comparing it with other whiskeys of similar category. And this is so unique; it stands out so much from from everything else. 
that being in a class by itself, it's hard to give it a score. But I'm gonna give it a solid 90 points. What would it take to go higher? A little bit more complexity, um, a little bit more uh, development and range, but it's an absolutely fantastic whiskey. Goes for about 40 bucks here in the United States, still widely available, widely distributed, um, and I highly recommend it. I think this is really, really cool. Something really, really uh, different. Um, and particularly if you're a, a bourbon drinker who likes budget bourbons, you know, you, you're, you lean towards bourbon, not just because of the profile of the bourbon, but because of it, generally speaking, they tend to be more affordable than a scotch. Uh, they tend to have a higher quality price ratio under $50 than scotches or Irish whiskeys, or a lot of other whiskeys. If that is the reason, one of the major reasons why you, you tend towards uh, um, uh, bourbons, then check this one out because this really adds a variation in the profile of whiskeys that you'll be uh, enjoying from here from the United States that have corn as the primary ingredient. All right, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much if you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social network channels. And if you've had this, I want to hear what you think about it. All right, until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.